guys. So it's what Wednesday, and I've been MIA, and I'm gonna talk about why. And things are gonna get a little bit deep. Um, so this is what depression looks like. I can smile. I can look like I'm fine. And literally for the last week, I really haven't been able to sit in front of a camera and be able to act and f and say things and be normal and not feel like I was lying to everyone. And I really wanted to cover specific topics, but at the same token, I felt completely disingenuous. And that's one thing I always said I would not be on this channel. And I decided that I had to take a few days and kind of prep myself to just be blatantly honest and be completely open. And normally Christmas is like my favorite time of the year. Last Christmas was the first year that I didn't want Christmas to happen. And that was because my daughter was living in China. And that is when I was in the midst of the worst depression I've ever been in. Um, and it was just before I started this journey. Um, and as I'm coming up on the one year of my weight loss journey, and I've been having all these issues with my scale and everything else, it just feels like so many things are going wrong. And my plate is so full. And I know my daughter's going to watch this, and I want her to understand this is not anything negative about her. This is 100% me, my feelings, my issues, and... I want to preface this by saying I love my daughter very much and I am so happy that she's happy. Like I don't, I've never wanted anything else. Okay, glasses are coming off. I've never wanted anything else for her but that. Um, but it's hard as a mom to have your daughter living 19 hours away and planning a move, move that's going to take you further away. Especially when she's getting ready to have her first child and your whole life raising her, all you ever thought was, I can't wait to be there when she's pregnant and be there for everything and help her do all these things, you know, help her decorate the room and help her, all these things I wanted to be there for and now I can't. Because there's no way we can live in Connecticut. There's not jobs for us there. The cost of living is through the roof. It just, it wouldn't work. Um... So having to like really kind of walk yourself through, she's an adult. She's absolutely happy. Her boyfriend is amazing. He has been so great with her and his family has been super supportive. And I guess seeing her at Thanksgiving just kind of started the shakedown a little bit on me. And like I said, again, this is all me, 100% me. 100% my issues um, because I want her to be happy and she is happy where she's at with who she's with and um, yeah so <clears throat> <clears throat> so that was the first part is knowing that Christmas Day she won't be here and all last year when she was in China I got myself the Christmas by saying it's okay she'll be here for next Christmas and now I don't know when I'll spend a Christmas with her again. And that's kind of hit me really hard. Um, I think the hardest part about raising kids is letting them go. And hoping that everything you did is enough. And I mean, I, she's, she is like the smartest person and she is gonna be such an amazing mom. And I'm like so proud of everything she's done and I just, I don't know. I just miss having her nearby. <clears throat> and with stuff going on with the move and stuff, um, it's been rough because normally when I need help getting stuff done, when I need someone to sit with me and go through stuff, she was always the person I could say, could you please help me? And she would help me. Because I don't have friends here. Um, my son, we won't even start with him. Because I love him. He's my son. But trying to get him to do anything without him sneaking off and doing whatever he wants to do is, like, impossible. And my husband 
He's got a list of things he needs to do that I absolutely can't do. And he works 10, 12 hour days. And he works on Saturdays. And I hate to ask him to help me, but I get so overwhelmed that I'm trying to go through stuff and either sell stuff or get rid of stuff. And I'm trying to do all this on my own because I can't really ask him for help without taking him away from the stuff he can only do. And we have weeks to finish this. And I just get super overwhelmed. And I get super, when I get overwhelmed, I start having panic attacks. When I start having a lot of panic attacks and I am feeling overwhelmed, I shut down and I get really depressed. Because I'm trying to get my real estate classes done so that when we leave, I'm already done with my classes. I can just sit for the test and start working right away. Like that is the goal. But I still have to get caught up on all my health coaching stuff. And I'm not. I'm nowhere near caught up. And I, mean, I know I have till June to finish it. And that's fine. I could still take clients because I've got my temporary certification on the health coaching part. I'm really just working on the life coaching part and the business part right now. But I still feel behind the eight ball. I still feel completely just like I'm just lost a little bit. And I've been using all the techniques that I teach other people, but I think it's easier when someone else is guiding you through the steps than to do it for yourself. And so I, you know, I bought the Panda Planner. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this every day. I'm going to get back to taking my medication. And then for me, when I get stressed out, I've been using my gym. And I haven't been able to because it took my husband almost two weeks to do the floor because we had help for four hours, three hours one day. And he's had to do the whole rest of it on his own. And of course, you know, it's it's a lot for one person to do a 23 by 15 room with tile. And we just got the washer and dryer back in. So I haven't been able to do laundry for like a week and a half to two weeks. I had to go, thank goodness, like we had enough clothes kind of stashed up. But we also went to the laundromat and that was an experience. Um, and I just... I don't know. I've just been super overwhelmed. I've when I started when I started gaining weight because I wasn't eating right, and then because I wasn't working out, I know I've gained more weight, and then my scale wasn't working, and I'm like, well, my 30 pounds more, my 20, like, what am I? And then I started getting frustrated. Like today, I am so swollen, and I know why because I had a soda yesterday, and I know that sounds crazy, but literally, I swell up like a blimp the second I drink a soda, which is why I don't drink them that often. Um, and I'm sure it's the sodium. I'm sure it's the sodium. But, you know, it's just, I need to go back to taking my meds. I need to start taking care of myself. And I need, I need to just be honest with you guys and be like, listen, this is where I'm at right now. Um, I don't want to fake being fine. I don't want to fake being happy. I don't want to fake any of that because it's not fair to you guys because I've always said I would be 100% transparent. And so this is what I've decided to do. Um, I'm going to do another weigh-in the first week of January, the first Thursday, which I think might be January 1st. Let me look. Um, it'll be the 2nd of January. So January 2nd, I will do my first weigh-in, um, my next weigh-in. I am going to give myself a couple weeks because first of all, my scale is still not working. My husband hasn't really had time to look at it. He was getting the floor done in the room. It's still not actually completely done. He still has a section that he has to grout and seal. Um, but we had to get the washer dryer back in because we were out of clothing. Um, I was wearing nightgowns some days when I knew we weren't going to go anywhere because that's what I had for clothes. Like Literally, it's how I got through it. Um, so he has, I think, his first job either Saturday or Sunday. And then he's off until January 2nd. So we will hopefully spend that time getting a lot of stuff done in the house getting the stuff he needs that he can only do done and then maybe in the evenings we're helping him help me with the stuff that I need help with. Um, and in the midst of all this, I, you know, I don't need more stress. I don't need more concern on my plate. And I like, I found that people on Facebook when you're selling stuff are the rudest, jerkiest humans on the face of the planet. Um, I had somebody for a $5 item that wanted me to drive an hour to go meet them. No. When I have a $5 item, you can pick it up in my town. I'm not spending any gas to come and meet you. Like, that's just how it's going to be. Um, 
I had an item I listed for sale for $15 and it was the, the big whiteboard that I used to use to put my weight on when I first started. I just really haven't been using it. And I'm like, I don't know why I'm holding on to this. I need to just let it go. I'll sell this. I had two new packages of markers, which I'm sure you know those are, are not cheap. Those are like eight bucks a piece. And then I still had like five other markers, two erasers, because I bought an extra eraser when they were on sale and like all this stuff. So probably like $60 worth of stuff. I put it for 15 bucks. The, 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 the writing thing was like brand new. So I was like, will you take 10 bucks for it? And I'm like, no, I priced it at 15, 15 is far. And the markers alone are worth more than the price I'm asking. And she's like, well, I don't want the markers. So just sell it to me for 10. You know, just like the attitude they have, like you're gonna do this because I want this from you and you're just gonna do what I want. And no, because the thing is, I don't have to sell any of this stuff. Like we're gonna rent a U-Haul and we're gonna put the car in the back and we're gonna drive through Texas and up Oklahoma and up the south side of Utah to get there so we can avoid any kind of bad roads. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, lady, this is not how you get me to sell you my stuff. Like, this just ain't it. And, um, I, uh, I was, I was so taken back, but I've had like four or five people message me kind of with the same attitude of you're going to, I'm going to pay you what I want to pay you and you're going to take it. I had a lady message me. We have a solid wood dresser. It's one of those tall ones and it's as big as I am as far as height. And pretty much. And I posted it for $100. It's like a $700, $800 dresser. But we just decided we're not going to take any big furniture with us if we can avoid it. And we're just going to pack up the stuff we absolutely need to keep or want to keep. And try to, I mean, I literally have gotten rid of half the stuff in my kitchen. Um, just because I don't ever use it. And I decided, you know, okay, there's things that I do need. And I put those on my wish list. And, um... I just, you know, I just kind of like separated out what do I want our new place to look like? What do I want in our new home? Like that kind of thing. And so I just kind of was like, well, I haven't used that. I've never used that. I wanted to do that, but I've never done that. And now it doesn't matter because the kids are grown. And like, I just kind of went through and just got rid of a bunch of stuff. And, um, so I'm just slowly going through and getting rid of stuff. And so I've been trying to sell stuff. Well, this dresser, somebody offered me $30 for it. Uh, no, like, and then I kind of feel like a jerk because maybe this person just really needs a dresser and that's all they have. But the amazing part is when you tell them, no, you're not going to go. Cause like I dropped it from a hundred to 80, which was where I was. That's our bottom dollar on a dresser. We'll take it with us if we don't sell it for 80 bucks. And so the lady started up at 30 and she came up to 50 and she goes, well, I think 50 is more than a reasonable offer. And I said, like I said, we put it at a hundred figuring someone would offer us 60 and we'd meet in the middle of 80 because 80 is our bottom dollar. And then she's like, fine, it better be in excellent condition and you better load it for me. No. Said very clearly on the thing, I'm, I, I'm not going to load it. We're not going to be responsible for loading it. And then you saying it has a scratch on it that we caused. Like, I know these games. I've already had people, like, scam me when they tried to, when they bought stuff from me. And I refuse to give them their money back because I would say to them, let me show you that it works. And they'd be like, oh, no, no, I trust you. No, I want to show you it works. No, no, it's fine. They'll just take it out of my hand. And, like, two weeks later, they message me and go, oh, it's broken. We just tried to use it for the first time. No. You broke the screen because you dropped it. It was The screen wasn't broken when you picked it up. Like, just these people just suck. And that's just not helping my attitude or my depression. Because I'm like... And it's just, you know, there's just so much going on in the world. And it's just a lot. I just have too much on my plate, like, emotionally. And everything else and I know that I'm not processing my food right because of my stress um I know you know I cannot wait to have my gym set back up hopefully early next week because I just want to be able to go back in there and just get on my bike and ride or get on my rowing machine and row or you know have my mat out and work out like I just want to be able to do that stuff and right now I just can't and it's frustrating because that's what I use for my outlet that's that's when I get frustrated when I need to kind of walk away from something that is what I use. And I haven't had that for a few weeks now. And it's it's showing in so many ways. Um, but I am going to be more consistent in posting. But I want to make sure that before I do that, I am 100% honest with you about what's going on. Um, because, of course, in the middle of all this... Um, 
my daughter went to a family Christmas thing at my aunt's house. And I asked her if my dad had said something to her. And my dad basically said two sentences to her the whole time she was there. And that bothered me because that's his granddaughter. And I'm very much, you know what, my dad and I have our disagreements. Um, apparently he doesn't like being my dad because I don't believe with, agree with him politically. Is all I can take from everything is if you don't agree with him, then he doesn't like you. Um, and that hurts because I still love him even though we don't agree on some stuff. And um, I really shouldn't be surprised, I guess, because, you know, I shared a thing today that it was actually for both my parents, quite honestly. Um, because growing up, I lived with my grandparents. I didn't live with my parents. My mom um, definitely didn't have the money to um, raise me um, or get me back because my grandparents had custody of me. Um, and my dad just chose not to come visit me um, most of the time or not to call. Like a lot of them, you know, there's a lot of the stuff in my life with my parents that I question because phone calls are free and... Um, the fact that, um, I think my mom maybe called me three times my whole life and my dad showed up around my eighth grade graduation and that was the last time I saw him until I moved to Georgia. And then I drove from Georgia. I was so excited I'd go see him. I drove, told him I was coming down. I drove all the way from Georgia where we were stationed at to, um, Florida where he lived only for my stepmother to tell me he wasn't home that he was busy that day and I had told him I was coming so you know I just I mean I understand they didn't raise me so they've never you know my mom has other children she raised so she's closer to them than me and that's whatever and my dad never raised a kid so I don't know that he knows how to be a dad and I absolutely forgive him for that like it's not but there's always this part of me that wants my dad or wants my mom. And I've kind of come to this point where I've just accepted that. At first I'd accepted that they couldn't give me the relationship I wanted. And I was okay with whatever relationship we had. Because at least I had a relationship with them. And now I'm kind of growing into this fact of. I don't know how to put it into words. Sometimes the relationship you have still isn't healthy enough to be a priority. Um, the last time I heard from my dad was over a month ago. Out of the blue, he sent me a rude text message and I just responded like, no, that's not true. About I'm not this, I'm not that, whatever. And it was political. It was completely political. And the fact that over... The fact that I'm an independent and I will vote with what I feel is right um, over a political stance. Um, here's the thing, though, is I don't care how you vote. I don't care how anybody on this planet votes. I care about how I vote and if I can live with myself afterwards. I vote for things that I feel are important to me because my vote has to do with me. It has to do with nobody else in this world. And that's how I look at voting. And I don't care if you're a socialist. I don't care if you're a Democrat. I don't care if you're a Republican. I am an independent. I register that way for a reason. Um, I have a friend who can tell you that up until five years ago, I was probably pretty close to about one of those lefty liberals as you could get. Um, now, how do you more than five years ago? How do you like maybe more than like eight, ten years ago? Um... And in my opinion, a lot of things have changed um, based on life experiences, based on research, whatever. That doesn't mean that I think that if somebody disagrees with me, it makes them less of a person. Um, we just disagree. I, through my own research, have come to my own conclusions. You, through your research, have come to your own conclusions. I'm not going to disrespect you for that. You're, I'm never going to be hateful towards somebody about that. And I just, you know. Um, and... I posted something on Facebook um, and I put in my most vulnerable times I struggle with the fact that you didn't want me 
You could have watched me grow into the person that I've become, but you didn't. You had a choice to be in my life. I thought that the fact that my own father didn't want me spoke to my own worth. I was wrong. I am so worthy. I am so deserving. And you have nothing to do with that. So thank you for leaving me. And I shared that because when I read that from an article, it was a, it was a much longer thing. But a lot of it didn't address my situation. And when I read that, I thought, you know, <clears throat> that really applies to both my parents. And I think it's the reason why with my kids, um, I would stand up 110% for them every chance I got. Probably to a fault at times. <clears throat> um, I made sure they knew that I was there. And I make sure that my daughter knows I'm there, even though I'm not there per in person. And hey, if she would have stayed local, I would be. But she didn't, so... <laughs> You know, but I mean, if she knows that I am here, if she needs to talk. And if I'm sleeping, as soon as I get up, I will answer her. Um, there are nights where I don't sleep because I'm afraid that she might message me. So I need to stop doing that for sure. Because she goes to sleep just fine. <laughs> it's all me being a worried mom. And that she's going to need me and I'm not going to be available. And, but I mean, it's just, I love my parents. And I want to make sure it's very clear. I love my dad. And I wish my dad could just love me for who I am. Because I'm not a bad person. Actually pretty freaking awesome. And I almost feel like these last couple months, a lot of my issues with my weight gain, well, I guess it's been last month and a half. <clears throat> and a lot of these issues with my depression have been directly linked to having to be honest with myself that I can't change who I am. And if who I am isn't good enough for them, it's not my problem. It's just not. And I am releasing myself from holding on to this expectation that I have to try to be someone worth them loving because I already am. And if they can't, that's not my problem. <clears throat> it's just not. And it can't be. It cannot be my problem anymore. I can no longer be worried about if my phone lights up and it's a message from my dad, do I want to read it? I can no longer chase after my mom and text her like, hey, what are you doing? Can we chat? Oh, I'm busy. I have company. Oh, I'm with your brother. Oh, I'll take your brother out to dinner. I lived there for five, six years, she never took me to dinner. <clears throat> when I was over for dinner, so were my brothers. Like, she worked five miles from my house. And the first time she was ever at my house was when Kenny had his going away party for the military. And she was literally there for like 10 minutes. Um, when I got married, I never even got a card from her for my wedding and she was at my wedding. You know, my father refused to come to my second, my wedding to my husband that I have now because my mom was going to be there. And so many things in my life have been screwed up because of things that don't have anything to do with me. And I'm tired of carrying them. I'm tired of them being a part of my story because they're not anymore. So January 1st, I am restarting everything. I mean, I'm still going to own the fact that I lost a lot of weight this year. That's not changing. And I'm still going to keep going. And <clears throat> so January 1st, I hopefully will tell you guys that everything is done in the house. Or January 2nd. I mean, I'm still going to make videos, so don't think I'm just disappearing. So I'll probably be doing updates of the house and what we've got packed and stuff like that. <clears throat> um, and I'm still going to do topic videos, but I'm not going to do weigh-ins until January 2nd. I'm going to take that off my plate because I know right now my emotional health, I know I'm gaining weight. I can see it in my face. I can feel it. And I'm still eating what I should be, which is what's really messed up. Um, for breakfast, I have one egg um, with about two tablespoons of cheese. Not regular cheese. It's the BioLife cheese. 
and um, a glass of water. And I've been drinking my water lately, so that's been good. And then for lunch, I generally make the little, I, the food prep, lunch prep I did. That's my lunch every day. And um, for dinner, we usually have something with chicken. And I've been doing paleo and um, I think it's just Asian paleo meals, basically. So we've been doing for the last week or so. Um, so, I mean, I've really been right on target and I don't, and so I know it's not what I'm eating. It's totally my emotional stress and it's, um, just all of that. And it's amazing. I've done a video before about what stress does, but now you can see it firsthand. This is what stress will do to you. And so I am working on the next two weeks on getting my life, two weeks, mm, about that. Yeah. I'm getting my life into a flow so that when I start back on my way ins and I find out the damage I've done by being depressed and letting other people's decisions affect my well being, um, it's a moving forward point. And there won't be looking back. There'll be, yeah, I lost a lot of weight last year. Um, but I am going to have this stuff down to a top, running top. And I am going to tell you how I got there. Um, but I got to get there first. So I'm still working on it. Um, but I want to be, like I said, 100% transparent. I'm really sorry. This is super long, guys. Yeah, I'm going to stop this now because this is really long. And if you've made it this far, I want to let you know I really appreciate that you did. Um, I know my dad sometimes watches these. I want you to know I still love you. I understand that you don't know how to be my dad. And I accepted that a long time ago. I just wish you could love me for who I am. And if you can't, that's okay too. But just be honest about it. Um, and that's it. Um, so I'm going to end it because I have to now because I'm going to go have a moment. And I will see you guys tomorrow in a better mood with a better topic, a more light, lighter topic. Um, yeah. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.